my Facebook um, uh, postings on the subject matter. It's just like, wow. <laughs> Kukona no mu nyumto chanje a young one um who tweeted um was no 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 he is a church boy but he doesn't agree with um with this and I'm just wondering over to you ladies Jamila what's your take I age before beauty can I know wound I first just want to say uh, greetings hi to everybody who's joining us. Uh, thank you, Sister Sota, for this platform. Um, you know, it's such a bold platform. And so I just want to thank you for that and thank you for having me on it. When it comes to this week's announcement, you know, there's two things for me. Two things, uh, first of all, that I've asked myself. Um, I've asked myself why uh, we wanted the platforms to be open. And I say we. Um, because you know there was an outcry of people who who represented the church and wanted um church buildings to be open so you know my first question was why and and i think that's something that everyone has to interrogate for themselves you know um not only just the pastors and leaders but people who also want church open need yeah. to interrogate themselves and find out why they need to go to the building because church hasn't been closed mm. If we believe that church is the body of Christ, church hasn't been closed. So yeah. the question for me is, why do you want to go back to the building? And I think I can't answer for people. And I think people have to have their own conversation. And I hope that would take the time to have an introspection as to why we want to go back. The second for me is that, you know, having to prove to the world that you are an essential service or having to prove to the world, in fact, that you're essential means that your presence hasn't been felt as being beneficial. So I had to ask myself why there has to be this whole campaign and lobbying to prove that the church is essential. And for me, if, if, if it hasn't been felt, and if there wasn't a need, and if, in fact, it wasn't government calling and saying, I know, please can we open the buildings please can we open for you together then it means that our our saltiness um is not salty <laughs> it means that we're not felt you know so for me those are the two things that we've got to consider one as an individual ask yourself why you want to go back to church ask yourself properly why you want to go back to church and then interrogate that and then secondly we've got to ask ourselves why we have to prove that we're essential what is missing um, and for me, what I found in my own searching was that actually we don't have any divine mysteries. We've got, we've got nothing to give to the world. And that, that isn't the way it should be. You know, we should have all these solutions. If we're the soul, people should know that there aren't people going hungry because the church exists. You know, there's all these things. Uh, there should be solutions coming out of the church. And if there aren't, then we're not essential. Yeah. That's, that's my oh, That is quite a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and you know, Zoto, I must agree, and, um, you know, you start saying, why do we have to prove that we are essential? Why haven't we been felt? Why uh, haven't we been salty enough? And I think for me, so uh, upfront, I need to put a disclaimer over to these are my views and I respect everybody's views. So, I have um, this view about the church in general. So my view of the church is a takeover a approach where the church begins to take over the various um, spheres of society. Not take over as in to do them, but to influence them. And therefore, I believe what you're saying, Ubuntu, that would make it essential because it, it is playing a role in the various spheres. But what I have observed is that currently the church has got a, a, a caretaker mentality. So instead of a takeover, it's a caretaker mentality where as the church, all we do, um, it's like a, you know, we take care of people's immediate needs only, you know, like who HR, who HR takes care of who makes sure who takes care of who but, and, and what's fundamental about uh, this uh, outlook 
is the pastoral. Pastors are shepherds. They take care of people. Whereas um, the first church was apostolic and the apostolic advanced, the, the church advanced into society. And uh, the second thing is that we are now moving from the so-called church age into a kingdom age. Now, what's the fundamental difference about that is that um, currently, Intekungete Amabanda is the so called religious spirit. So, in spiritual religion, what it does, it, uh, it is man's search for God. So, man is trying hard to make it their way to a God who's perceived as far away. Whereas the kingdom mentality, iti, that's why we are called the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is what you're saying, Nobundu, by saying, Church is within, you know, church hasn't been closed because we've all been praying and we've been using technology, we've been meeting. So effectively, if church um, was in the kingdom framework, then it would have advanced into society. So I really, I have got a cry, Uguti Amaband must start to advance into society and, and be an answer, as you're saying, be salty, be an answer to families. Uguti, and I do need to say this about the churches. Uh, I've seen how they've been doing funerals. So that's servicing Abandu and being relevant to um, the family sphere of society. But we need to become more the trauma counselors. And uh, in education, I've got a dream. Uguti, ama is interested Zivule, like they've say, started saying. And I was very happy. Based on where we have a crash, we have a e call, we have you know extra space, we can do economy. I am looking for a fund disabazoti in Jamia Banda is available, or Zani Bantu in the milk in the marketplace. Sizo Kalama to them sevens, who's is in Zamasonda because then you remain essential. So I fully concur with what Numbuso is saying. So I just pray, Uti. Beyond prayer, evangelism, I live in a strategy, my actions to implement, to be relevant to society. Mm. Wow, that's a mouthful. All right, so let's just go to um, now directly to the topic that we are handling today, that is Christianity in Africa. So our mass statistics here are telling me that there are over 2.3 billion people in the world that are Christians, which makes us the largest um, religion by population. And in Africa, over 390 million, and it's growing rapidly. And in South Africa, where we are broadcasting from, 80% of the population is, um, follows a Christian-based faith. And now coming back to what you ladies have just alluded to, that, you know, then I, I become concerned. Then if it's such a big number of people, but they are not doing what you've just um, mentioned now, as in take over, as in being apostolic, as in providing solutions, you know, um, what, what, do, what do you think is the a challenge? What, what, what's, what's, where's the blockage? I'll start with you, Nobuntu. Uh, Osis Tomile mentioned religion. religion. Um, and, you know, it's a word that we use so loosely. You know, um, we talk about being, I'm Christian, therefore I'm of the Christian religion. You know, it's a word that's just used so loosely. But unfortunately, as a spirit, as the sister Miller said, it has kind of distorted what is supposed to be the Christian faith. It has distorted what I believe Jesus uh, came to teach us in the world. Mm -hmm. So let me start here. And I think in, in Africa and in South Africa in particular, the distortion into religion. And I say something in, in, in my latest book. I say something and I say it in the, in the preface of the book is that there's a, 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 an isinguni word or an isizulu word uh, for going to church, which is called ugusonda, church going, which is ugusonda. And doing some research, I found that that word came from people who were observing and realizing that actually the church going was literally ringing the God out of us. You know, and 
I think it's the best way to describe what religion has done. Religion uh, is a, and this is how I define it, it is a set of practices that are done in the name of devotion. Religion is not a relationship. Yeah. Religion is not a way of life. It is a set of practices that are done in the name of devotion. And so religion, uksonta, kusonte the God out of us. You know, um, and uh, where it comes from is a lot of the religion, uksonta, comes from colonization. It comes from the colonial lens or the colonial uh, approach to relationship with God or to Christianity. And I'm just going to share one thing um, in, in, in this part of the conversation, and I'll share more as we go on. But one of the yeah. biggest mistakes has been that we have believed that Christianity came with the settlers, or Christianity came with white people when they came to Africa, when they came to South Africa. What I found when I was doing my own research and when I started this journey for myself of decolonizing my faith, was that Christianity can be traced back so far. In fact, the God of the Bible, if we are to talk about the God of the Bible, in the Bible, you find Africans. There are Africans in the Bible. And unfortunately, because the names have been anglicized, you know, you sometimes miss them and you don't know that these are Africans. There's a Kandake who's a queen. She's an African queen, but in the Bible, she's called Candace. Mary, Mary's name was Miriam. Um, Jesus was Yeshua. So we don't see ourselves in the Bible, but we're there and we've always been there. When Philip comes across the eunuch, the African eunuch, the African eunuch is reading Isaiah scrolls. So this African eunuch, and by extension and by assumption, his people knew of the God of the Bible that Isaiah would have been talking. They had a relationship with the God of the Bible. So the biggest misconception is that Christianity came with the missionaries. It did not. We have a relationship with the God of the Bible that is from before we were colonized. But, but now the unfortunate thing is that when it came and was reintroduced, it was reintroduced with a whole lot of religious sondering that then moved us away from the relationship with God. It came with a whole lot of things which we now think and know to be Christianity, but those things are not Christianity. Those things are the anglicization of, of Christianity. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of a commercial. The book that she's referring to is this one, The Fire in My Bones. So I will encourage our viewers, um, if you haven't, um, uh, uh, if you don't have a copy of this book, it would be a good idea to get it. Let me give you an opportunity. Wow, 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 Nobuntu. I love that research you did on Uksonda because I think strangling uh, ourselves out of ourselves is exactly what actually happened. So, uh, just to add to what Nobuntu is saying, uh, I fully concur, Uguti. Uh, as Africans, for th there's a, there's a lot we can go into, but mm -hmm. for the sake of keeping it concise, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. if you think about it, uh, when you look at the great pyramids, for example, you know the the great wonders, the great wonders that we see in Africa. Uh, we see the great pyramids, and when there's research done, you know you see great pyramids. You see uh, the first uh, tracings of writing, mathematics. You see like the great walls of Zimbabwe and so on and so forth. Now, when you look at these wonders, uh, the world has uh, said these belong to a lost civilization because they just cannot uh, fathom and believe and ascribe it to Africans because surely it couldn't have, come, it couldn't have been done by Africans because we were not there yet. Yeah, and uh, one of the greatest mysteries for me is the fact that the pyramids have been built the way the earth hangs on its axis, how it rotates 
and it is apparently precisely the same, you know, degree of tilting and everything. It is so scientifically constructed. That's why it's a wonder. And but when the world, the researchers find that they can't ascribe it to Africans. So Mina, I know that those are the wonders for you to have built something that lies in the same way as as the earth has been uh, premised in the in the universe you must have had a relationship with god where else would you have gotten those dimensions uh, the same way as noah got ama dimensions for the ark directly from god there's no question about that one but there's a question about this one so i'm just uh, coming back to the fact that i do also concur that we always had a relationship with God and a part of the um, imperialist agenda, the colonization agenda uh, brought Christianity uh, probably in the later, you know, it's a, it's a post Jesus. So what I've just outlined is an AD scenario. In fact, it's the first dispensation. And then you've got some, I think 2000 years or so up to Jesus comes. And then when that comes, it is then uh, brought in a container, a Western container. And it's in that, that we lost ourselves as Africans, but it, it had an agenda to do that because it needed to take away our identity so that it can colonize us. And then what we did, we then adopted the newly given identities by our colonial uh, masters whereby we then had a, and you know, it's clear what the colonizers wanted to diminish us and say we are lesser than. They wanted to take away Indozeto and say they are evil. And that's what they achieved to do and left us confused. We then embraced it. And unfortunately, it also uh, oppressed us economically because and we said it's Tatak. But it is on Dyson, that's how I'm a snipe. But you know, Niso Sebenza team, who's a Nibene Mali, your Gogales is in the Ofana Nikoge. So, because of the godliness in us, which is depicted in Ubuntu, we wanted that message, we identified with the message. But then the message, the container of the message, oppressed us. And that was always the agenda. And we have never taken the time to ask God to redeem our, ourselves as a people. Because God is not a respecter of people of persons. So God doesn't have a problem with our Africanness, just like he doesn't have a problem with the Westernness. But yeah. we must yeah. be allowed to be in our area that God has given us. Oh yeah. All right. All right. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. See, I found that I'm trying. Said something there. You know, one of my probably first gripes with the institutionalization, it was sort of the other day, that word, I struggle with it, with the institution institutionalization. <laughs> After <laughs> all <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> Don't <laughs> worry, don't worry, no wonder. it's part of that container. Hey, <laughs> it's part of the container. So um, one of my biggest struggles was the dress code. You know, um, when we went to church, I, I, I questioned that, especially when I started going to predominantly white churches and I'd be like, oh, these people are in shorts and t-shirts. Why are we always so stiff when we go to church, you know? And then, you know, you start asking people, you start asking, okay, so why do we have to get so dressed up in suits and ties and, you know, two pieces to go to church? What, what's this about? And people would be like, no, when you go into the presence of God, you need to you know, be dressed for it. Would you show up in your t-shirts and jeans to meet the president? Um, you know, and, and, and already it's just so problematic the way we had then structured what should be a relationship into an occasion. So now it's a Sunday thing, it's an occasion, you dress for it and, you know, you are there to meet um, the, 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 the God who is clearly not a God that you can relate to or converse with um, every day, all day, no matter where you are inside of you, you know, you have to show up in a certain way. And, you know, I then started to research where that came from. And Mrs. Dumile has spoken to it, you know, it came from the fact that 
when the missionaries then came with the gospel, there was a sense of, in order to depict your new life and this new faith you have chosen, here is the, 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 the garb that goes with it. Here is the attire that goes with it. The attire that you wear is, then we were told, heathenistic. The attire that you have is ungodly and you can't be associated with it. Here's the godly attire. And so we've always then, from generation to generation, associated godliness with the Western attire. And it was only recently that I grew up, so I grew up in a, a, a very conservative church let me actually just say since i do say it in my book i might as well say i grew up in the assemblies of god and it is only recently that i started to see people from the church i was raised in starting to wear traditional attire because all along growing up there was a sense that it was hedonistic in some kind of way that if you're a child of god you don't wear it and it that is it breaks my heart because how you clothe yourself is such a big part of your identity so it was one of the what you referred to, uh, Sister Mila, about, you know, the clothing and the tie, it was one of my first gripes, one of the first things that I started to question about this God and that made me struggle with relating with him as an African as I embraced my Africanness. Yeah, it's captured nicely in your book. So ladies, let me just go to our Facebook page just to check uh, what sort of questions do we have currently. Um, we've got quite a few people that have tuned in. We appreciate that. I have a, it's a comment from Pumzile, Pastor Pumzile Majola. Christianity was given to the disciples in Antioch. They were called Christians because people observed that the disciples did things like Christ, behave like Christ. Therefore, Christianity is about an individual dying to self and becoming like Jesus Christ, Dispre displaying the fruits of um, the spirit. All right, you agree with that? I see you guys nodding. All right, okay. So there's another um, comment from Ubu Singyovu Kamabele. Jesus Christ never ever had to prove his relevance and or being essential. I believe the time is here and now when the true worshipers will worship God in truth and in spirit. We are in the time. Christians must just unlearn ugusonda. These are comments, uh, ladies. And then Umbem Jalosa says, colonizers became our uziyas, replacing our relationship with the true God. Uh, and uh, Yoli Sasiklesh is saying, wow, powerful. Um, let me see. Uh, and of course, my daughter, Onobundu Mkwana, is laughing at Sunday best. <laughs> you will know best because she really believes in you. As her mentor, she says, I'm not woke. As a Christian, you are the one that's woke. And therefore, <laughs> whatever I say is like, yeah, okay, ma, I hear you. But let me go and check with this is no boon. <laughs> so shout out to you, this no boon for that. Um, all right. So ladies, those are the comments. Is there something else that you would like to add from those comments from our Facebook page? You know what, um, Zoto, just to add on the Sunday best, because it's very yeah. interesting. I have had the same struggles as a no boon. But I recently watched a series called Black, you know, the guy who did Blackish, it's on uh, Netflix. Uh, it's called uh, Black What's um, uh, but it's, about? I know the series you're talking about. Yeah, it's Black something, and it just shows how much of a TV person I am, but my children said I should watch it. But what they highlight uh, on that uh, particular series on Netflix, is where the African Americans got it. Apparently as slaves, their masters, the only day they took the slaves to you know, public gathering was on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would show them off to each other. So they would dress them to kill, take them from the, take them from the um, fields, dress them to kill, and go and uh, show them off. So that's in America anyway, 
That's where the whole mm -hmm. Sunday best thing came. And he was saying, that's why uh, as African-Americans, they are slavering under the, the hold of always having to dress. You know how us as Africans, we dress nice and we wear nice shoes and we wear expensive clothes. And as you're saying, no, no wound you. And you find our counterparts saving for a trip to go overseas and maskogelenje, you know, say abashega, maskoge upep, you know. But he was saying that uh, that is he he was identifying it as a struggle of a black and not black and an African American uguti value for them. You are perceived as a valuable person, which goes back to our our identity. How these various imperialist agendas uh, have impacted the African person. Uguti, your value is only derived from what you wear. And they, that was done intentionally in, in Africa as well as uh, to the Africans that were taken to other, um, you know, other nations as slaves. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So now the big one. A lot of African people would tell you, but you know, Bona, they don't believe in Jesus Christ because uh, each Judah, they have absolutely nothing to do with each Judah. So Bona, they just want to stick with their ancestors because those are the people that they lived with and they know. So Mangabebea M. Samo. With their ancestors, they know what is something is going to be happening, and 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 you know, and I would just like to know you because a lot of people I think um despise Christianity precisely because of that point. Which I yes, the colonial part that we have referred to, but I mean most of us a lot of people will be like, Oh no, we acknowledge God, but we do not acknowledge Jesus Christ. And um, so I'd like to know what you guys have to say about that. Amadiozi. no problem. I, I turned fifty last week, no wound so sing any leg we great yama elder. Yeah, so where do I start? Um, I think before I, I go on to this one, I need to first honor, honor those who have gone before us. Because uh, the culture of honor he, he has left, you know, our society where we dishonor those who have gone before us. So, Mina, I honor, I honor, uh, I mean, we honor the prophets of old, but I also honor uh, our African leaders who have led us in the church, in politics, uh, and in all various areas. And really, I honor because they did the best they could. Uh, and however, now there is a need for us to go on from there. And um, also the fact that, and I think it's coming to Ayamadlos, having said that I honor what they did, uh, I need to also say this. It's important that uh, as Africans, we do succession planning. We need to then uh, invest in our youth. We need to get ready, uh, you know, the next generation that are going to take over and take up from us. Because I think uh, sometimes when uh, the youth are is giving them new revelation, there's a tendency to want to hold on to If you think about mm -hmm. Moses, for example, Moses, uh, uh, you know, raised to Joshua. Now, yes. Yes. I think Ukulunkulu caused Moses not to go across into, uh, into Canaan because I think Moses would have said, Joshua, you know, Joshua, this is how we part water. Yeah, and yet at that time, Mungulungulu, I said, Nene in Dela, I have Funa Ujosho, I seven Zis to take Abandon of our Israel across that second body of water. And one niggas a different way, Joshua, what in Gena, Ume with the Ark of the Covenant, Masa Unge Nilemanzin, and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to say, I honor it's a, it's got a blessing as well as a curse, but also I really will appreciate Uti. The next generation 
to be able to take us to the next place because sometimes they have technology, they have just new revelations that God gives them. So, having said that, Epi Pelini Sizwang is spoke so far as God. He spoke so far as La Panagu Hebrews. It was hard. Where he spoke so far as. He spoke so far as he has got all the saints that have gone before us and are waiting for us. You know, La Pagu Ephesians, it speaks about the church in heaven and the church on earth. And Sisazo Tangani is what? The two churches. So there is a church in, in heaven. And it's it's those Asebe Sandule, Langit, starting from Umuf Kalale Mumva, you know, the, the prophets of old. But Mina, I believe, Wuti, of course, even Abantu Basema Kaya Kiti, in other words, Abanta Batala, who have passed. Uh, I'm not a judge, so let me say, passed and are in good standing with God. They join Ifulofagas because they are still there. Now, my belief is that they are cheering us on because uh, we're running our race. So there are there before the throne of, of God on the sea of glass, waiting for us. And they are cheering us on. They are souls of those who have gone before us under under the um the altar of incense before the throne of god and they are crying and they're saying how long lord how long so they they, they are they are praying with us as in fact so for me part of the problem that has happened is that it me figure e christianity in this container here west at the about everything. But that includes making sense of what it means. What do we do? Babu Abatala. So si ten mas na babo na batal muti bagu pi ule religion e figi lenja. Savele kwase kubongati there is now two parallel paths. Kona le path ka Jesu, enge na bo abantu bagita batala. So we will look up to Abandabadala, Bezinizis, with Bamayama nations. So, Sasa, see, see, Kala and Aweni, where we didn't have an answer to integrate the two. So, me, Numan Kuleang, it's Ununguga, Ka Abraham, Ka Isaga, Chagobe, Ka Aron, Ka Tavite, Ka Tumid, because that's my grandfather and that's my father. They had a relationship um, with God, and I believe Uguti, they are looking on. They are cheering me on. They are witnesses before God. They are reminding Uguti, you know, and you know. So I, I don't. I think what we haven't done. I don't have all the answers, but I think what we haven't done is find a way as ama Christians and to 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 decolonize our Christianity and make it relevant to us, so that we can redeem. Our our uh, Ubuntu bed, redeem it into the dispensation of uh, of Jesus Christ. Wow, wow, wow! That's quite a mouthful. I guess it's like only na Ubuntu. Ubuntu I think one of the biggest issues, and Sister Miller just you know she captured it so succinctly. One of the biggest issues has been the inability to find ourselves in the bible the inability to locate ourselves and i think that's the that's been the biggest issue and that's been the biggest source of rejection you know our inability to find ourselves and you know i was embarrassed when i realized when i started learning some things and realizing some things you know i realized that all along i've been looking for a a sphere so a you know um in Andy, I had been looking for a Jablani, you know, I had been looking for a Domzi Kona in the Bible without contextualizing where we come from as Africans and that actually as a Southern African, we were not always here. So, you know, my journey started with going back to Africans in the Bible and realizing that when the Bible speaks of Kush or when the Bible speaks of Kushites, it speaks of me. That is me. And it is me because some 
almost 2,000 years ago, we migrated as Africans, went west and then central and then down to the south. We were not always here. And so the Bible speaks of the Cushites. It speaks of Cush. And Cush was the area that was just below um, Egypt. All, everything below Egypt is Cush. So every time that a Cushite is mentioned, Zipporah, all of them, that's me. Because we were not, we had not occupied Southern Africa as yet. So all those people that are mentioned in the Bible, those are my ancestors. And actually, to prove this, I am born of a Zulu woman, Oasenutu. I'm born of a Zulu woman, Oasenutu, uh, Ozala Matulu, and for many generations, her whole lineage has been Zulu. But my brother went and did a DNA um, heritage test. And he found that on our maternal side, uh, we are originally Cameroonian. So all these years and generations of Zulus are actually from Cameroon. He is still going to do, because unfortunately for the paternal side, uh, I can't do it. Um, it has to be done by the male only. So he's still going to do, I'm waiting for him to do the paternal test. Lockdown has happened, so we're going to be waiting for a while. But he still is going to do the paternal test for us to then find out my father, who is closer, um, which makes us closer. Oh, what's he, where, where is his lineage and where does he come from? But this is what helped me recognize myself and find myself in the Bible. What also helped me recognize myself and find myself in the Bible was that recognizing that Jesus grew up in Egypt and in the Middle East. So he lived in Africa and in the Middle East. And, you know, these symbols and images that we've always seen of the Caucasian blue eyed blonde haired Jesus are not correct. They are not accurate. They cannot be because he grew up. How do you go and live in Egypt and hide in Egypt looking like that? You can't. So those are the things that helped me, first of all, in locating myself and in locating my ancestors in the Bible and in knowing that they are part of the story. It was in recognizing that I'm not going to find a Sindhisi in the Bible because actually that language was not even there. And that I'm not going to find somebody who was living in Southern Africa because we were all somewhere there in, 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 the, in the North, in the, in the, in the West, and then made our way, our, our way down to the south. So that's the, I want to give that context first. I think it's important. Yeah. When it comes to ancestors themselves, there's a pastor that really helped me to make sense of this whole relationship. And I think that it's a sensitive one. But to start na navigating it, you need to be willing to unlearn and almost remove and uproot what you've been taught. And he said that his name is, um, is, is Seviwe. And he said, Jesus, and in fact, so what I'll do is on this post, on the comments, I'll share that, I'll actually share that sermon because it's online. Okay. He says in the sermon that ancestors are a thing that exists. And then, you know, he quotes that transfiguration where Jesus appears and he's with Moses and he's with Elijah. But he says, here's the thing. If Jesus, if, if my ancestor doesn't point me to Jesus, then I, I, I've got to reject that ancestor. And he points to that scripture and he says that in the moment where the disciples are saying, oh, let's set up three shelters. Basically, let's set up three spaces of worship. And then God's voice comes and says, this is my son. So basically, in that moment, God points us to Jesus. And the issue has become I think the issue has become, when it comes to Christianity and ancestors, the idea that it is only Jesus that is the medium between us and God. There is a cloud of witnesses, as Sister Mila has said, but it is Jesus who points, it is through Jesus that we go to God. Um, and I think the issue becomes when we want to then go through our ancestors to God. And if you are to follow the Bible, and if you're saying, you follow scripture, it is through Jesus that we get to God. Our ancestors are a crowd of witnesses. Yes, cheering, yes, praying, 
but it is through Jesus that we come to God. And I think that's the distinction. And I think if you can then relate to Jesus as not being a white man with blonde eyes, then it's not so difficult for you to relate to him as the way to God and to relate to him as the son of God. It's because you know that actually um, he's not something that's so foreign to you. And that is helpful. And in the same breath, for me, it means that he's not foreign to anybody. He shouldn't be foreign to anybody, even if you're not brown skinned. So that, is my, that has been my journey on identifying myself and realizing that my ancestors are in the Bible and realizing that I can relate with God, uh, I can relate with Jesus as my personal savior and way to God. Amen. Wow. I, can, I, can I add something? Yeah. Zodo, just to say yeah. what she said there was so critical. Our ancestors are Zangabas fan. And Siazutinda by Inekas. And uh, that's why be, even in the Old Testament, Besnuma Ilwane, Unkulunkulu, was Sipa Indela Yokumi Ilwane as a way of atonement for our sins and therefore a way to Him. And the asset of Unkulunkulu in Yokumi Ilwane so that there would be blood spilt and then the priests would bring it here. Yeah? Now, uh, up until the, you know, the final sacrifice, which was Jesus, which who, who, was, um, who shed his blood once and for all. So, you, so lento yoguti ube singati our amadlozi e to asenda wenga jesu doesn't even make sense because uh, we always needed isluane to spill the blood so that there would be atonement for sin because umunda wa zuba nukleluane without blood but now part of the confusion and i've listened to abantabadala bekulma about this amadlozi were never meant to go uh, between us and god as in jesus as in the sacrifice even that is a confusion of the modern day african people who actually don't even understand so it's just to say but we needed the blood. So is the only way to the Father. They've got other roles which we need to find and locate. And but more than anything, I always say the honor that I spoke about, to remember, to, to have a memorial, to have all these things. Now we've rejected all of that as Safun Nogwenza Maja because and so on and so forth, because you know, we've now got and we don't understand mm -hmm. each is just as kumbos moba no 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 chago be wabegi eche to say uguti kwenze gelan so nya ashon juguti we just have to make sense of our Africanness within the Christianity so there's nothing wrong with kumbula but they cannot mediate between us and God I also wanted to add juguti in the Bible whenever you see in Jobesh Nobund Egypt Ethiopia Kush, that's Africa. It's Whoa. you and I. You must Whoa. know. And you must know. We, we need to know what it uh, now when we see Egypt in the Bible, we think of Lea Egypt in the north. And we know what Africa, but it was one before 1884. You know, we Africa into the various countries. Back in the day, we were one nation. And God now, in terms of raising up Africa, wants us to go back there and work as a united people group so that um, so that we can advance E-Land. E-Agenda. One last thing uh, on this topic, uh, Zodra. When the Israelites came to Egypt, Babel Sevent, Neskatik Busu Joseph, Elanda Umdenwam, Befiga Egypt, Babel Sevent, Bahamba Bay Million. How did, what color do you think they would have been by then? Babel Kanenene Nobani to just prove the e, e, e deception of uh, the, the, the imperialist agenda that was injected into Christianity, Ugutu Jesu, Abe, blue eyed, blonde hair, and, and everything else, Ibe Jalo. It, it's just a lie from the pit of hell. Israelites didn't, don't, didn't look like the pictures that we see now. Mm. Wow. <laughs> All right, ladies, thank you so much for that contribution. Am oh, I no, able to add just one small thing? Mm-hmm.
small one. So the other thing is that I asked myself, Fuguti, how come we don't have a, 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 a well in my language that I grew up in KZN? So I never knew of an Isuzulu word for angel. It was Ingelos, which actually comes from the English. And so when I went looking, I found that actually <laughs> what we called divine beings, as in the Bible, we called that Ilos, the divine beings that were in the Bible, we called them idols, and we called our ancestors Amatombo, because they were the ones that were sleeping. And that actually is something that, you know, I encourage everyone to actually reflect on and start looking on and thinking about as well. Or would see, we somehow, that's probably how we got to that distorted sense of idols being the, the mediator between us and God. But the first understanding was that was the word we used for angel. Because I was asking myself, why don't we have a word for angel? The word was angel. And we've come to understand the angels as something else, um, as something very different. Yeah. Because all along, our ancestors was Amatonga, the ones who are sleeping. Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Let me just go to our Facebook page, uh, ladies, and see if we've got any questions. Um, all right, Tanele Lamagakula says, um, these are issues that need discussing without being persecuted. Sometimes when we raise these things, for raising the topics. Well, <laughs> Pumzile has a question, which is, so what do we teach the young generation? My own Ubuntu, what do I teach her? Because she's quite a handful. Uh, and then Usalele uh, Richard <laughs> says Revelation 6.10, and they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. Um, I'm a crowd of uh, witnesses here. Yeah? All right. Let me see what else. Uh, all right. I've got us to to give Uti Zipporah was a descendant of Midian, who was the son of Abraham. So, as Africans, we are descendants of Abraham, same as Sheba. The name Africa comes from the name Ophren, who conquered Libya. So, every time we call ourselves African. We claim our lineage to Abraham. I know uh, in your book, you also talk about the original name of Africa being al -Kebanan. Yes, yeah. And we probably, probably have to, uh, just, to touch on that, you know, because I think there's something uh, that will help someone out there. Um, let, me, let me then allow you to perhaps maybe, you know, uh, respond to the questions or maybe to some of the comments. Um, I can just maybe say something about uh, the underneath the, um, the altar, but how long until you avenge uh, the, our blood? So I think basically that speaks to why they are cheering us on, because they want us to finish the work they started. And that for me, in Tindek Julian with Israel Amuguti, uh, those who have gone before us sacrificed with their lives, with their blood, um, you know, siabazu ukshupega, iga kugazi kum Africa, but basically all all those who were for unkulunkulu, you know, bashupegi all around the world, and they want us to finish the race that they started. So that is what um, something that drives me. Egwenzi ngwameng tingwens, yeah. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Tumile. Mabuntu? I want to answer the one about what do we teach the next generation. Mm -hmm. So when I was writing my book, I was fortunate that my mom was one of the editors on the book. And uh, I was saying to her, Ma, you know, I'm really scared uh, um, as I write this book because I'm not a theologian, you know. 
um, I'm, you know, I haven't studied this and I just feel like, you know, um, I, I don't have the credibility. And my mom said to me, you have to understand that the theology is the revelation of God about his word to people who are like you. You are a person and God will reveal himself to you just like he revealed himself to those people. So just as there is the gospel of Martha, there's the gospel of John, their own experiences with God, there's the gospel according to Nobuntu Webster. Because Nobuntu Webster, God reveals himself. Well, she would have said Nobuntu Klaas. God reveals himself to, will reveal himself, my maiden name, God will reveal himself to Unobuntu Klaas as well. He will reveal himself just as he revealed himself to those people. So for me, that is what my mother taught me um, in some, you know, last year, uh, over the past year. And it is something that I want to teach those who come behind me, that God speaks even today. God reveals even today. If you seek him and if you seek him through his word, he'll speak through his word. He'll show you what he meant. He'll show you why the stories are in there. He'll show you who those people are and he'll show you who he is today and what he means to the world today. So that would be my messages. Encourage them to seek God because God will reveal himself to them just like he's revealed himself to our ancestors and those who've gone before us. All right. God speaks. He still is revealing himself. Not that there's anything wrong with us, but maybe it's a good idea for us to actually, like with that, there's nothing wrong, of course, but maybe it's a good idea for us to seek him for ourselves. I think it goes back to the relationship that we were referring to. So let me go back to our page again. Um, Can I just add something to that, uh, yes. Zodra? So, yeah. for example, part of um, some, some circles I'm in, is the whole thing of going back and tracing back Ubuntu, Bet, Uguti, Babushuti, etc. Now, if you look at that, there was a lot of structure. Ukfundisa Abadala, Ukfundisa Bangane, Ukfundisi Indombi, and so on and so forth. Indela Zozozopila. And so I just really believe that uh, as we find our true identity in God, we are going to be able to reintegrate our very own practices, in terms of about succession planning, oh mama bafundi sabangane, oh baba bapase onto abadala. Si agwenza kuto accent na yo i effect le wakfanele ibe na yo. So njobe buzuti si funsa ninga ni. Mapela mapela there is work to be done. We need to trace ourselves back and integrate our Africanness. Ubuntu bed because I mean I believe Ubuntu was the godliness that was already in us, which we then put away for something a Western a lot of the time, which doesn't have nearly even as much substance as Ubuntu bed. And uh, I just need to say this: Uti, Ujes, when he came to Earth, he took off his robes of righteousness. Waba Ubuntu jengat nzamu highlighter just how wrong. Uh, bringing a gospel that was dressed in in a uh, western clothes was who mm -hmm. didn't come wearing his righteous robes he came wafana nat so we just that's why we need to have we've got a case to make uguti why we need to go back because it should have come ya fige ya koga lokesa si kogile yenzi senso in rectifying uh, is in the Africa if God is going to be able to use us? We are going to have to do this, and that's what we're then going to pass on to our children. We're going to have to put back a structure into our society that are then going to be the infrastructure for us to be able to really find ourselves in God and then be able to live uh, to the full and achieve our full destinies in God. Wow, I'm so excited. I can see a world that Econo Thrive Global. I can see these master classes. Samba now, you see, Papa Lenda was Kuduza, South Africa, Kuduza, Southern, Eastern, Northern. 
<laughs> I am so excited already about the prospects that are going to be coming out, ladies, from this conversation. And I, I probably can just go ahead and say this, that when you talk about a relationship and the importance of listening to God, this is, what, this is listening to God. What we are doing today is precisely that. It has taken a lot of obedience from me because many times we ask, oh, why me? Like, I, why, why not somebody else? No, I'm not ready for this. Oh, no, 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 no. I like to be in the background because I am a connector. So I like doing events. I don't want to be in the front line, you know. And this is why I'm saying, uh, Nobuntu, when I read that page 110 in your book, something shifted in me. And I knew what I get. You cannot touch her. This is it. So just go for it. So I'm, I'm really, really honored, ladies, for your contribution. Let me go back to our Facebook page again and just see who would see Batine Abandu Abasi. Zoto, and tell her who congratulate us is because Jabusha and you to umlale lungulungulungulu. No, it is absolutely exactly what Ungulungul is saying. Uguti. It's a gospel according to Nobundu, but it's the acts of the apostles. So the apostles simply recorded what they were doing. I always say it's for you to write the next chapter of what you are doing, but more especially when Azodwa. You see, uh, in terms of the micro level uh, as the church, the, the, the relevance of the church uh, in today's society, you are doing just that. Your call is obviously in media, arts and entertainment, arts and culture. You are doing, by doing this, you are living out your, your, your kingdom mandate in this sphere and being able to saturate this sphere with the content that's going to bring what? The kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of knowing and understanding. Because the kingdom of light is the opposite of the kingdom of darkness. Darkness yes. is when we don't have knowledge and we are perishing for a lack of knowledge. So now the kingdom of light, which is what you are doing, which is what, you know, Zotwa, this particular sphere is the, the, the devil has used it more than any other because who was the propagator is the agenda through this sphere and Agwa's infiltrator in Gondo Zaband. We are a tripartite uh, being. We are spirit, we are soul, which has in Gondo, it is Zio, ne will, and then we have a body. So is in days where we spirit zingenakale and in into our soul before we live them out in the natural, okay, in the flesh. Now the way is in though they get into in on the is through this platform. So Mina, I'm seeing you taking over, like we said, which is a kingdom uh, agenda, taking over a sphere, and more people have to do that. So Mina, I'm just so touched with the fact that you have yielded the call and you've taken some action. Thank you so much. I'm excited about the collaboration because I have noted that um, also Africa Become Media is one of the things that you are looking at. Uh, Nobuntu, of course, Avid Media, you are already there. You've uh, published books. So yeah, we've got this, ladies. We've got this uh, <laughs> as we do it. So going back to our Facebook page again, uh, all right. <laughs> Our brother Usbugnen here is saying uh, interesting questions Zoto, about those who acknowledge God but not Jesus. Here is one critical operative word according to Usbu Trinity. God is one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he goes on to say, Ancestors, by the way, are not evil, not at all. Of course, guys. It had to go to that. <laughs> And then uh, our brother Lapa Usanele Richard Taylor is quoting Matthew 17, uh, um, 3 to 5. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if you wish. Let us make 
here three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out loud out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, in who I am well pleased. Hear him. Which is, Amen. Amen. Uh, Alright. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and then okay, Mabu is saying powerful comment, no Ubuntu. We have to learn to seek God on our own. This is really first hand, not Ugutti. Uh is are there to guide us but not to replace God in our lives. Oh, coach, I was saying this when we were uh, um, earlier, guys. I was saying this when we were earlier, guys. I was saying this God speaks and he still reveals himself to those who seek him. This is according to Uput um, Sanele Tele. All right, I'm just going to read the uh, last comment that from Pumzile. The church, meaning you and me as individuals and as a collective, have been called to be witnesses. We need to know God for ourselves and go out to tell others. Speak of the things we have tested and handled of the word of life. That is the uh, first John uh, chapter 1 verse 1. Okay, so those are just some of the comments that we have from our Facebook page. Wow, what an exciting time, ladies. One hour is not enough for this. This is why we have to do these master classes. Please. There's a whole lot more that we need to do, especially on the part of teaching the young generation. So um, I'd just like to give you an opportunity for your parting shots. I'll start with you. I think Dumile, you look like you want to say something. Okay. Um, guys. Um, I think the last uh, comment is where I need to uh, do my parting shot. Uguti, funelatina, and it takes me to the scripture. Sct. Ungulungulu raised the fivefold ministry uh, to equip, not to do the work of the ministry. So it grieves my heart. At this juncture, during this time in our country when we are facing, you know, COVID-19, if we had equipped Ibanda for the work of the ministry, finally, we are seeing your congregator around the equipper. We are finally being equipped. I gang. Equipper for this nazin le la zogum tola. We are seeing all the technology. So it, it concerns me, and it, it speaks to the fact that. The work of the ministry is what we have to do as Iban, as in not necessarily the fivefold ministry. Tina, in other words, Tina, e -e congregation. The congregation must be the ones who are going to take over. Iban is moving into a kingdom a dispensation, you take over. But the takeover is not done by Abefundi. So I, I hope Abefundi are not feeling like, hey, Sizoyenza Ranja, Nigayongele, Dota. Our whole is to equip us. We media like you have. I know how to advance the kingdom agenda and take over for Christ and implement godly principles and values and witness. So we need to do the work. We need to be witnesses. We need to witness and do, be doers of the word, because that's how yeah. the kingdom of God will come out of us, Mabatua, the kingdom is within, and then it will advance into our society. And that is really what the mission that Jesus Christ is, as Shele Nayo, Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Mille. Uh, Nobuntu, let me allow you to give us your parting shot. My parting shot is this. Um, earlier this week, I had a conversation uh, on, on God and an African. Uh, and one of the things that came up was going back to 
who we are as Africans and our nature of the circle, our, our architecture, our hearts that are in a circle formation that allow for fellowship and engagement in a circle formation. And I want to add to that a scripture, which is in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26, which says, what then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. So my last thing is to say that in our African culture and in the word of God, in the kingdom culture, everybody has something to contribute. There isn't one authority that comes and tells us and feeds us. So we are all here to pour in and we are all here to build into the body of Christ and into the world. So that is my parting shot to say, take your place, take your own place. And as we take our place, God is going to reveal things to us. God is going to reveal how we become the solution to the world. As long as we're all relying on being fed and being given, we're not there yet. It is part of our African heritage and it is part of our scriptural heritage to all put in and to all build and grow each other. Yeah. Take your position. We all have been given something to contribute to this world. What we need to do is to just take our position and run. Because indeed it is. Now I can say this confidently that it is Jesus Christ indeed who came so that we can have this life and have it abundantly. It is definitely Jesus Christ. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do another commercial. If you haven't um, bought your copy of uh, this book written by our guest, Nobuntu, please just go ahead and buy this book. Information, my to Iona Ezos Legelela, Uba Sikubegele Pambil, Iska Kulgaz, Genesis, SMP Sholo. I see my sister there. <laughs> I'm loving this. This is Africa become. <laughs> yes, yes. Utinda Nenami, Umutinga, any PPE. No, so okay. PPE, Yatolagala, Africa become. Uh, I'm really excited, ladies. Um, about this and um, I just want to say this um, I will take it upon myself that we have these um, uh, uh, classes you know I think there is more that needs to be revealed and uh, so that we can empower people out there because I think the challenge is access to this kind of information which otherwise would probably have not been um, readily available out there so uh, we can do this via uh, the current setup. It's easy. We already have a youth seminar as the Kono Thrive Global that we are hosting on the 11th and 12th um, of June under our Econo Foundation. So it is possible. I'm just saying this so that all the people that are watching us and those that will be watching us, um, watching this clip later, so that you can be on the lookout of um, another contribution that we will have so that we can go deeper into these teachings and um, so in case it was cooler, it got cool as the Enko scene in who's taller Tina in Pella, Uba Singo Bani, Uchahova and Yena Ubani, Kitina. So with those um, words, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say thank you so much, uh, ladies, for joining us um, today as we are going towards Pentecost. Yes, it's also from this. I'm going to use the words. Pentecost? What do you mean Pentecost? Uh, Zoto, can I just say something? Uguti yes. lendo to oiti zo itata apa ma master classes guze skubungu yeah. le zindaba. Yes. It's in skubungu le zindaba that as the Africa makes sense and uh, really distills evangeli liga Jesus Christ with him soon that yeah. God is counting. He's spoken to us in a lot of prophecy. God is then counting on the Africa to then uh, evangelize the world because the world ipete lele ling. Uh, this cool but it's as we we you know really grapple and make sense and take our positions that we are literally going to be the missionaries who are going to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world and that is the juncture that we're in and and then the end will come because when the message of the gospel is preached to the world the real message of the kingdom 
then the end will come. So that's where we are prophetically as the Africa. That's why the world is saying Africa, the last frontier. Wow. I'm just reminded of someone that said to me, well, so do you understand? <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> Thank but we so have to do the work first. We have to do the work first. Yes, of course. Simba, Lenobund, well done. Well oh. done. Mm. Yeah, amazing. And, yeah. In what? You exclusive books. Um, is there any other place where they can get the book, Nobuntu? Exclusive books, bargain books, CNA, take a lot. Um, there is a black owned company called Z media. You can get them online. Africulture, yes. you can get them online. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. Okay. So the book is there. It's everywhere. There's no excuse. Just go and buy the book and uh, so ladies, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your time. I'm just so grateful that it was the two of you. <laughs> It's just an amazing God. Um, to our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. I can promise you we'll see, we're coming again next week, Thursday. We're starting, oh, level three. Yay! And we're getting into youth month. So let's just see a good also about these um, topics and subjects that we are talking. So with that, I'd like to say thank you so much. I do love you a lot. Uh, you ladies and also the people that are viewing us. <laughs> I'll blow a kiss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, so can I ask Unobuntu to actually close with a prayer? Thanks. Father, we thank you for this time because Siabonga, Augustana, and Sangal and Jela, Siabonga, Lily Tuba, to get to know you in. A more intimate way, all the webs that are on our eyes, and to have you revealed in your true form. I pray, Father, that you will complete the work that you have begun. I pray, Father, that it will continue in each of our lives. It will spill out into our communities. It will spill out into our cities, into our country, and into nations. We thank you that you have called us for such a time as this. May you prepare us, Father, to take up our positions. May you anoint us and may it always be for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. When you say it's for your glory, you there is a song that I always play. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> we will meet again um, on Thursday with our viewers and if you're going to be watching this clip uh, later, thank you so much for the support. We really appreciate it. For his glory, we will do it. 